type of functional group did we start with here? Alcohol. So notice that if you start with an alcohol and oxidize it, you might produce either an aldehyde or a ketone. If you start with an alcohol and you oxidize it, you might produce either an aldehyde or a ketone. Um, why is this important? Well, for example, this could be useful to you on a synthesis problem. So suppose that you're doing a synthesis problem and you notice that the final product is an aldehyde or a ketone. Well, then you could say to yourself, gee, maybe one of my intermediates is an alcohol. I need to make an alcohol so that I can oxidize it. That would be a kind of a retrosynthesis idea. Uh, in fact, I think that at this point in the course, the only way you know to make aldehydes and ketones is by oxidizing alcohols. So actually, if you're doing a synthesis problem and you see the final product is an aldehyde or a ketone, you know for sure um, that, that you're going to have to oxidize an alcohol. So why does sometimes an alcohol give you an aldehyde and sometimes a ketone? Well, what type of alcohol is this, primary, secondary, or tertiary? because the alcohol carbon is attached to only one carbon chain. But what type of alcohol is this on the bottom? Secondary. Because the alcohol carbon is attached to two carbon chains. So we can see a primary alcohol oxidizes to an aldehyde, because uh, an aldehyde only has one carbon chain. And a secondary alcohol oxidizes to a ketone, because a ketone has two carbon chains. Um, so uh, that's good to know over there. It's kind of a trick question. To predict the products in this case. Uh, it's kind of a trick question, so I'll just tell you there will be no reaction here. There's this no hydrogen on the carbon. Yeah, we've been saying that you can't oxidize unless you have a carbon-hydrogen bond. Um, so there's no way to oxidize this because there's no carbon-hydrogen bonds to break. There's no way the carbon can form a new bond to the oxygen because it has no carbon-hydrogen bonds that could break. Uh, so it would have to end up exceeding the octet. Um, now, what type of functional group is this? An alcohol. But how is it different from the previous alcohols? It doesn't have a... Primary, secondary, or tertiary. It's a tertiary. That's right. So as you were going to say, I won't interrupt you, it doesn't have any hydrogens because it's tertiary. OK. So we can see that a primary alcohol oxidizes to an aldehyde, a secondary alcohol oxidizes to a ketone, and a tertiary alcohol doesn't oxidize at all because it has no carbon-hydrogen bonds. Looking at your sample exam, I actually saw that there was a lot of problems where the answer was no reaction. So you definitely need to know when there's going to be uh, no reaction here. So that would give us uh, these uh, ideas over here. Let's take a look at the, the handout that I gave you. So if you look, if you start at the very top of the handout, um, we start with just a one carbon chain, and you can oxidize that. That has plenty of carbon hydrogen bonds, and that would give us formaldehyde, which is just a type of aldehyde. I think we saw last time that a carbon that's connected to two hydrogens is a special type of aldehyde. You could have a carbon with two hydrogens. Or if you start with a primary alcohol, you can use PCC to oxidize it and get an aldehyde. Or if you start with a secondary alcohol, um, you can use PCC to oxidize it and get the ketone. But the tertiary alcohol doesn't oxidize because of the tertiary alcohol, the alpha carbon has no CH bonds. Okay. So this uh, oxidation of alcohols and reduction of form alcohols handout kind of summarizes uh, those ideas. Let's do a little uh, retrosynthesis. What would be a good starting material for this if we wanted to oxidize this in one step? I'm sorry, if we wanted to produce this in one step. If we wanted to do a one step reaction that would produce this, what would be a good starting material? Yeah. Let's see if you can draw the right one. By the way, in the future, <clears throat> when you're doing retrosynthesis, remember it's better to put the product on the far right of your piece of paper, then that leaves you room on the left. I didn't know we were doing oh, yeah, sorry about that.
So here's the skeleton. Here's the carbonyl carbon. Uh, but we know it's not going to be uh, a carbonyl here because we're starting with what type of functional group? Alcohol. Yeah, so I'll put an alcohol here. OK, good. Uh, great, you just have to decide what other start reagents you need it to. Right? Good. That's right. And what's good about that solvent? Let's see. Right. So uh, I, something else I noticed in your sample exam is that the instructor seems uh, very insistent that you have to show the solvents. So you should learn what the solvents are for each of your reagents. Um, the good thing about this solvent is, remember, um, we don't want to overoxidize. Mm -hmm. We don't want to. Overoxidize. Well, it turns out that the, things that the thing that makes you overoxidize is water. So the important thing about this solvent is that it's not water. We need to stay away from using water. The great thing about PCC is that it will, um, you don't need water to dissolve it. A lot of the other oxidizing agents only dissolve in water, and then they're not all that useful because they usually overoxidize. The nice thing about PCC is you can use it without any water. For example, we can use this uh, uh, aquatic solvent here, CH2Cl2. So this is a good solvent to know. Okay, and by the way, so here we can see that this carbon now um, in the, on the left-hand picture has fewer bonds uh, that we, we don't have this pi bond anymore. So we have to replace that with new bonds for the oxygen and the carbon. Well, you replace the oxygen's pi bond with a sigma bond to the hydrogen. And what are we replacing the carbon's pi bond with? Well, a bond to a hydrogen, which might be hidden. Maybe it's a good idea to draw it in just to show what's happening. That's a matter of taste, but we must have put in a new hidden hydrogen uh, over here. So that would give us uh, this product uh, in this case. And again, we've gone here from a secondary alcohol then to a ketone. All right, so this is a good example of a very simple type of synthesis. You need to be able, to, basically, you need to be able to do this backwards and forwards. It's very important to be able to analyze this backwards uh, and forwards. With practice, that's not too hard. It's a relatively uh, simple reaction. All right, now let's draw the product. So, again, is this an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent? Oxidizing agent. How do we know? Because we just have that memorized. By the way, all the oxidizing agents that we use for oxidizing alcohols, they all have chromium. So you can recognize this because it has chromium. What does the C stand for in PCC? This C stands for chromate. This is pyridinium chlorochromate. Uh, for this course, I don't think you need, well, I don't know. Um, you can look up the structure of this in your book, just in case you need to know it. But, uh, I, I had it somewhere right. I've known. Anyway, if you look up that picture, uh, you will see that I did not lie, there is a chromium in there. So this C stands for chromium. Um, so uh, that shows that all of these oxidizing agents that we're using for oxidizing alcohols have chromium in them. Okay. Um, so you're oxidizing the alcohol, so you're putting in a new pi bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So to make room, you have to break the hydrogen off the oxygen. And you broke off uh, this carbon-hydrogen bond here uh, as well. Now, um, is this a case where we're going to oxidize or over-oxidize? Do you remember, does this reagent oxidize or over-oxidize? Yeah, Which means that actually this would be the wrong answer, because we've only oxidized once. Uh, maybe instead of using the word uh, over-oxidation, maybe what we should say is PCC. This reagent oxidizes once, and this reagent oxidizes twice. Actually, the term overoxidize is kind of maybe so misleading. If, I mean, why would you use chromium over PCC? It, do you ever want to oxidize twice? Or is over, is over like a right. negative term because it's just... Okay. Yeah, actually, I think that you, you worked it out. So why would you ever want to use this reagent? If you want to oxidize twice. If you want to oxidize twice, you would want to use that. Uh, and you're right, overoxidation is a kind of negative sounding uh, term. And the reason is that usually we only want to oxidize once, at least at this point in the course. But you know, sometimes you, you do want to oxidize twice. So maybe overoxidation isn't the best term. Maybe we should just be neutral and say um, that uh, if you want to oxidize once, this is a good reagent. And if you want to oxidize twice, this is a good reagent. Um, okay. 
So, um, so we're not done yet. We're actually going to have to show this. Also, um, uh, the other reason is you just have to learn about this because it's covered in this part of the course, and they can show you questions about this. Yeah. Uh, because uh, basically, uh, this would be a common mistake uh, that a student could commit in a lab, taking the wrong oxidizing agent and getting the product they didn't want. So, so let's see how this will keep oxidizing. 